So Shavasana classically is done with the legs extended long. But as I have aged, I find that I don't like my legs extended long anymore. I like to be in what is referred to as restorative rest, which is that that is knees bent, feet on the floor. You don't have to be in that position. You can have your legs extended long. It's perfectly fine. We'll go to the bent knees position eventually. But finding stillness in the body is what the goal is right now. So the legs in whatever position feels appropriate, the arms resting comfortably alongside the body or possibly resting on your belly if that feels appropriate. Feel like your chin is a little bit lower than your forehead and your jaw is relaxed. And once we get into this relaxed position, it allows us to bring our attention to the vehicle of the practice, the breath following the breath into the body, too, too bright? Too, too bright. Okay, I'll turn it down. Following the breath into the body and following the breath out. Not changing the breath yet, just acknowledging the breath. How is the body breathing me? Am I breathing through my nose? Am I breathing through my mouth? Am I breathing through a combination of? Is my breath short and jutty? Is it long and slow? Somewhere in between. Usually just the act of acknowledging the breath begins to help it slow down, deepen and lengthen. So if that isn't happening naturally, begin to do that. Try to allow the belly to really expand on the inhale and the belly to contract on the exhale. Deep belly breathing. Today's reading is, the simplest vacation is a walk with a friend. Sometime soon, plan a walk with one of your friends. Enjoy the conversation, the rhythmic movements of your steps, and the fresh air. Note how your body has lifted when you return. If your knees are not bent, bend your knees one at a time, bringing your feet to the floor. Lining your heels up with your sit bones, pull your shoulders down away from your ears. Let your arms rest a comfortable distance from your body with the palms facing up in a receiving position. So this position is what we refer to as restorative rest. Inhaling and exhaling. As you exhale this next time, let one ear descend down toward the floor and inhale the nose back up to center. Exhale the other ear down toward the floor and inhale the nose back up to center. So this is our pattern. The breath is moving the head. The inhale brings our nose to point toward the ceiling. The exhale takes one ear down toward the floor. And as you continue the pattern, begin to notice how this feels across the back of your head. Into your neck. And maybe your upper back and collarbone. And then how is it making your head feel? Does it feel delicious? Or is it making you a little bit dizzy? The next time your nose is pointing toward the ceiling, pause. Let's float our arms off of the floor, pointing our fingers toward the ceiling, palms facing one another. Let your shoulder girdle rest heavily into the mat. Soften your elbows slightly. Keeping your arms long and alongside the body. As we exhale this next time, one pinky and one thumb is going to drop about halfway down to the floor. Inhale the fingertips back up toward the ceiling. Exhale the opposite thumb and pinky down toward the floor. And inhale the fingertips back up. Continue this pattern. And each time you exhale those arms down, maybe dropping them a little bit deeper. And don't try to go to the extreme initially. Let the muscle tissue warm up slowly, exhaling the hands down toward the floor, 
Inhaling the fingertips up and exhaling down to the other side. Breath and motion. So for me, my pinky touching the floor eventually is pretty easy. But I have a deltoid injury in my right arm, so bringing my right thumb all the way to the floor is really just a bad idea. The next time all the fingers are pointing toward the ceiling, pause. Inhaling and exhaling. And then let's go ahead and interlace our fingers. Pull your palms down toward your chest and then turn your hands over and push your palms up toward the ceiling. So your elbows are staying soft. Your fingers are interlaced. And if this causes any issues with your knuckles, it hurts your knuckles, you can stack one hand on top of the other instead. And then with those palms facing the ceiling, let's just draw a little bitty circle around the ceiling. Small circles, maybe the size of a dessert plate, so not big circles. Find a rhythmic breath pattern. Maybe one circle is an inhale and one circle is an exhale. And then pause and reverse the direction of those circles. Same action, just different direction. Inhaling and exhaling. And then pause that action. Lift your head up and place your head on top of those interlaced fingers. Letting the arms, the elbows just drop down toward the floor. Bring your inner legs to touch. Engage your core. Pull your belly slightly toward your spine and allow your knees to begin to descend out to the side. Eventually bringing the soles of the feet to touch. Keep your core engaged. And once the knees are out, decide if where the feet are is the best place for them. Maybe a little closer to your seat, maybe a little further away would feel better. So if you're having any issues in your low back, you might need to tuck your tailbone up a little bit more. You might need to engage your core a little bit more. You might even need to lift your knees a tad if the low back is really unhappy. But if it's not, just allow gravity to really open up the groin here by letting those knees just descend down toward the floor. Breathing, breathing, breathing. So just a passive stretch for both the armpits and the groin. And let's lift our head up and slide our hands out from underneath the head and then begin to slowly extend the arms and legs out long, coming into a full body stretch. So as we inhale, push through your heels, lengthen through your fingertips or on the rack. As you exhale, soften, feel like you get a little bit shorter. Inhale, push through your heels, lengthen through your fingertips. Exhale, soften. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Good, bend one knee, bring that foot to the floor, bend the other knee, bring that foot to the floor. Slide your arms down to a T position and rock your knees and nose the opposite direction. Knees and nose the opposite direction. And then one more time, let's float those arms off of the floor, pointing the fingers toward the ceiling, palms facing one another. Let your shoulder girdle rest heavily into the mat. Grab a hold of the back of your left wrist with your right hand. Get a nice firm grip on that left wrist with the right hand. And then very gently use that right hand arm to pull that left arm across the body, bending your right elbow a lot. Turn and look toward that right bent elbow. Engage your core and very, very slowly allow your knees to begin to descend to the left. Take your time here. Don't let them flop. Let them tick, 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 tick down. So we allow the transverse abdominals, the ones closest to our internal organs, to actually activate and participate rather than getting jerked around. So you roll to the outer edge of your left foot, the inner edge of your right foot. The knees are descending to the left. The arms are going to the right. And so is the head. So we're in a spinal twist. Listen to your low back and your hip. If this is hurting at all, or if there's any sensations that are uncomfortable, you might need to lift one or both knees up a little bit. You might need to engage your core a little bit more. But within a comfort range, once again, just like gravity, do the work here. Relax your jaw. Let 
noticing sensations in your body. Inhale, knees, nose, and arms back up toward the ceiling. Let the long arms point toward the ceiling. Thumb, thumb, corner to corner on through. As your knees just weave a wall, side to side. And then we're going to get ready to do the other side. Take a hold of the back of your right wrist with your left hand. Nice firm grip. Use that left hand arm to pull that right arm across the body. Bending your left elbow a lot. Turn and look toward that left bent elbow. Engage your core and allow your knees to very, very slowly descend to the right. Take your time here. Don't let them flow. Backing off if we need to. Within a comfort range, just allow those legs to become heavy. Relax your jaw. Breathing. Inhale, knees, nose, and arms back up toward the ceiling. Let your knees weave a wobble as you float your arms down to the floor, either out in a T position or maybe down closer to the body. And once your arms are in position, pause the rocking of the knees. Let's exhale the right knee in toward the chest and just let that leg collapse down in toward the body. Noticing how this feels in your hip, your knee, your lower leg, your ankle. And then let's inhale that right leg up toward the ceiling. Keep your knee bent and the ankle relaxed. And then let's take that right ankle and rotate it slow and large. Inhaling and exhaling, big circles. The ankles are small, but try to make the circle as big as you possibly can. And then pause and rotate the other way. Rotate the other way. And then pause. As you begin to lower that right leg all the way to the floor, lock the knee, push through the heel, pull the toes back towards you. And this first time we're lowering the leg down, we're taking our time. We're pushing through the heel, we're pulling the toes back as if the leg is moving through thick mud, lowering it slowly, slowly, slowly. Once the leg touches the floor, let it relax. And then we're gonna begin bicycle legs. So we're gonna exhale that right bent knee into the body. We're gonna inhale that right long leg up toward the ceiling, lock the knee. Swiftly this time, we're gonna exhale that right leg almost to the floor, try not to touch. As you inhale, push that heel further away from your hip by grabbing your ankle and pulling it long. Exhale the bent knee into the chest. Inhale that long leg up toward the ceiling. Exhale that heel almost to the floor. Inhale, push the heel further away from the hip. Exhale the bend knee in. Inhale the long leg up. Exhale the long leg down. Inhale as it hovers. Exhale the bend knee into the chest and hold this position, not the breath. And then inhale that right foot back to the floor. Before we begin the left leg, notice how your legs feel compared to one another. They might feel the same. They might feel very different. Let's exhale that left knee in toward the body and just initially just let it collapse in. Noticing the bend in the knee, the sensations in your hip, the knee, the lower leg, the foot. And then let's inhale that leg up, not completely straight, but keeping the knee bent and the ankle relaxed. So we've got lots of access to really rotate that left ankle now. Rotating one direction. Slow and large. And in the other direction. Go the other way. Pausing that action. Lengthen that leg and very slowly lower that leg all the way to pull. Flex the ankle, pull the toes back toward the shin, lengthening that leg. This first time we're moving slowly. Lowering that leg all the way to the floor eventually. 
And once the leg is down, let it relax. And then we're gonna exhale that left bent knee into the body. Inhale that long leg up toward the ceiling, lock the knee. Exhale swiftly this time, that left heel almost to the floor. Inhale as it hovers, push that heel further away from the hip. Exhale that bent knee into the body. Inhale the long leg up. Exhale the long leg down. Inhale as it hovers. Exhale bent knee in. Inhale long leg up. Exhale bent long leg down. Inhale as it hovers. Exhale that left bent knee into the body and hold. And then let's exhale that right knee in toward the chest also and grab a hold of each knee with the same hand. And let's just weave a wobble a little bit side to side. And for now, you can just stay here with the weave wobble if this feels good on your back. But if you prefer taking your knees out wide and maybe rolling elbow to elbow, that's an option too. If you'd like, you can roll all the way over onto each side. Whichever variation feels best for you is what you would like to do is fine. The goal here is just give the back nice and soft. And then let's come back to the middle, draw those thighs toward one another, lower each foot one at a time down to the floor. And lower the hands down alongside the body, palms facing up. Inhaling and exhaling. Breathe. And then let's go ahead and roll over onto one side and rest there for at least a few breaths before you come up to a comfortable seated position. I'm a week, the other two haven't joined us yet. <laughs> Okie dokie. So once we're up, sitting nice and tall, lifting the sternum, dropping the chin, releasing the shoulders away from the ears. And let's be in Dandasana, where the legs are extended out long, the toes are coming back toward us, the knees are locked. Just find a happy place for the hands to be wherever that is. Close your eyes for a few breaths. And the one thing I notice when I'm in this position is how uncomfortable it is. It's not a very comfortable position. Breathing. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna lean slightly to the left. Then we're gonna bend that right knee and bring that right foot back toward the seat. Then we're gonna bend that left knee and bring that left foot to touch the right knee. And once you do this, you want your bones on the mat. So you might need to wiggle squiggle around a little bit because I really don't like it when my ankle bone touches the floor or my knee does. So right now, our right heel is toward our seat, not necessarily to the seat, and our left foot is resting hopefully on our right thigh. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our hands on either side of that left thigh. I hope no one's had a big dinner already tonight. Usually I teach in the morning, so I usually say breakfast. <laughs> So hands on either side of that left thigh. And what we're gonna do, and you may wanna watch me before you do this, we're just gonna bring the torso down toward that leg. So that might mean that you just take your hands out like this. You might be able to come down deeper and possibly lay on that leg. So we'll use the arms for support here, whatever way works best. Only coming down as deep as you comfortably can. Since we're laying on our lungs, it does, constrict our breath a little bit and coming down and laying on it might be too much for your lungs. Let your head round forward so your cervical spine is rounding. And we're just inhaling and exhaling. And then let's go ahead and place our hands underneath our shoulders. Keep your head hanging as you straighten out those arms. And once the arms are straight, lift your head up. And then we're gonna walk our hands away from that right leg, past the left leg, coming into a more intense spinal twist. So what we're gonna do here is once again, we're gonna bring our bodies down. So that might mean this, you might just walk your hands away. You might be able to bend your elbows and come down to your elbows. You might be able to stack your hands 
or fists and rest your forehead on the stacked hands or fists. Listen to your body and back off if you need to. You can stay up on your hands and arms. Breathing. And then once again, we're gonna take those hands and place them underneath our shoulders. Let your head hang as you straighten out the arms. And once the arms are straight, then lift the head up and swing those arms around, or like, those are legs, legs around in front. And when she'll wipe them in and out, pound them up and down. So now we're just gonna go to the other side. So we're gonna lean slightly to the right. We're gonna bend our left knee and bring our left heel toward our seat. It doesn't need to come to your seat. And then bend that right knee and bring that right foot to touch your left thigh. Good. Hands on either side of that right thigh. And this side may feel completely different. You may have more access, you may have less. So both knees are bent. We're gonna bring our torso toward that right thigh. And remember, it might be this position. This might be the best you can do. Do you need some help? No, I'm just watching. This is bent, right? The right knee is bent and touching the left thigh. The left knee is bent also. The left knee goes back toward your seat. The left foot goes back toward your seat. Right. right, so your left, sit back up tall again. The rest of you can lay in your position. So sitting up nice and tall, okay. Lean to your right, no, yeah, to your right. Then bend your left knee and bring it toward your seat. Left knee and bring it toward, perfect. Now bend your right knee and bring it toward your thigh, to touch your thigh. There you go, that's it. Now hands on either side of the right thigh, on either side, not over here, not over here. One on either side. No, other leg, other leg. There you go. Your left hand needs to go closer to your shin. There, perfect. Now come toward your thigh. There you go. Resting as deeply as you're comfortable with. Remember this is constricting your breath because you're laying on your lungs so you might need to adjust. And then let's place our hands underneath our shoulders and straighten out your arms, let your head hang. Once the arms are straight, then lift the head up. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk our hands past that right thigh, away from the left leg. So you guys are going the opposite direction of me if you're facing me. And then from here, this might be where you need to stay. This might be the most intense you wanna get. You might be able to walk your hands a little bit further away. You might be able to bend your elbows and come down to your elbows. You might be able to stack your hands with fists and let your forehead rest on your hands or fists. Remember to back off if this is too much. Relax your jaw. And then let's place our hands once again underneath our shoulders. Straighten out your arms. Lift the head up and swing those legs around in front. Windshield wiper them in and out, down, then up and down. Good. Let's go ahead and come around to tabletop position. So if you know your knees need protection, you can double up your mat or you can use one of your props to protect your knees. If you don't have any issues with your knees, then just find the tabletop. So in tabletop position, the heel of the hand is a little bit forward with the shoulders. Spread your fingers wide and activate your fingertips. Dig them into the mat slightly. That takes a little bit of pressure off the wrist edge of your hand. And if you have carpal tunnel issues, that can be a godsend. The knees down from the hips, the chest lifting away from the mat, the nose looking at the mat. And from here, we're gonna move into our cat cows. So as we exhale, we're rounding the back. We're lifting the contracting belly toward the spine. We're dropping the head and tailbone down. As we inhale, we're releasing the expanding belly down and we're lifting the head and tailbone. Keep your fingertips engaged. Exhale as you round. Inhale as you arch. 
Continue the action and begin to notice how this feels along the length of your spine. Is it a nice, delicious movement? Or are there places where there's a little glitch, maybe even a little twinge? Make sure you're honoring anything that's uncomfortable, nudging through slow. The exhale rounds the back, fingertips are engaged. The inhale arcs the back. And then coming back to neutral spine, chest is lifting. Then we're gonna move into what I refer to as dog wags. So as we exhale this next time, we're bringing one hip and one shoulder toward one another as we look over that shoulder. Inhale back to neutral. Exhale the other side, hip and shoulder toward one another as we look over that shoulder. Inhale back to neutral. So this is our new pattern. And once you get the rhythm going, you're bringing that hip and shoulder together or toward one another, maybe not together. And then looking over that shoulder, Start to focus on the opposite hip and shoulder and pull them apart. So right now I'm going to the left and then I'm pulling my right hip and my right shoulder away from one another. So I in, and then I inhale back to neutral. Exhaling, hip and shoulder toward on one side, I pull apart on the other, and back to neutral. The next time you're in neutral, pause. Notice where the heel of your hand is and release your elbows down to that same spot. So at this point, the forearms can remain parallel to one another, or if you'd rather bring your hands together and interlace your fingers, you can do that. Whatever position feels most stable for your lower arms. And then we're just gonna go into our cat cows again. Same action for the spinal column, the arms are just in a different place. So exhale as you round the back, chin into the chest, inhale. Pull the chin away from the chest as you arc the back. Good. Let's go ahead and come back up to tabletop. Again, that heel of the hands a little bit forward of the shoulders. Let's extend one leg back long, curling those toes under. Exhale, push back through that heel. Inhale, roll through the ball of the foot and the toe. Exhale, push back through the heel. Inhale, roll through the ball of the foot and the toes. And you just keep doing this pattern with the heel pointing up. And then eventually we're gonna heel, turn that heel out to the side so we stretch out that pinky toe. So we internally rotate the femur, we roll to the outer edge of the foot so we're stretching out that pinky toe. And then let's switch legs. Bend that knee and switch sides. Extend the leg back long, curling the toes under. Exhale, push back through the heel. Inhale, roll through the ball of the foot and the toe. And then eventually turn that heel out to the side. So we're stretching out that pinky toe. And then bend that knee. One more time, we're gonna drop down to our elbows. And we're just gonna rotate our wrists and wiggle, squiggle our fingers. So just giving, the, giving a little massage maybe to the hands, the wrists. And then we're gonna come back up to tabletop once again. Let's go ahead and extend the left leg back long, curling those toes up. At this point, I like to curl my right toes under too. I don't know that it's necessary. I just like to do it. And then we're going to lift that left leg up so it feels like it's parallel to the floor. Inhale and exhale. And then lower that left foot down, bend that knee, and shift to the right leg now. So extend the right leg back while I'm curling the toes under. I like to curl my left toes under too. And then lift that right leg up so it feels like it's parallel to the floor. We're not bringing it way up in the air. We're just bringing that leg so it's parallel to the floor. And then lower that right foot down, bend that knee, and rock your hips and shoulders a little bit side to side. Pause. So keeping the legs right where they are, shift your weight into your right hand. And spider walk that left hand away and bring that left hand up near your ear. So the palm is turned inward toward the body. 
lifting out of that right shoulder, and then bring that left hand back down to the mat. Shift your weight into that left hand, activate those fingertips and spider walk that right hand away, bringing your right arm up near your ear, palm facing in toward your bottom. And lower that right hand back down. Once again, we're gonna release down to our elbows and rotate wrists and little squiggle fingers. In just a moment, we're gonna add those two movements together. So opposite leg and arm are gonna extend out. So coming back up to tabletop. Let's extend the left leg back long, curling those toes under. Like I said, I like to curl my right toes under. You may not find that necessary. And then we're gonna lift that left leg up so it's parallel to the floor. We're gonna shift our weight into that left hand, make sure those fingertips are engaged. We're gonna spider walk that right hand away. So the left leg is long, the right arm is long. We're lifting out of the left wrist. Breathe, inhaling and exhaling. Bring that right hand back to the floor, bring the left foot to the floor, bend that left knee, and rock your hips and shoulders a little bit side to side. And then pause that action and let's get ready to do the other side. So extend the right leg back long, curling those toes under, maybe curl the left toes under as well. Lift the right leg up so it's parallel to the floor. Shift your weight into that right hand and spider walk that left hand away. Lift out of your right wrist, lengthen through your right heel and your left fingertips. Lift your chest away from the mat. Lower the left hand back down, right foot down, right knee down and rock. Oh, actually let's go ahead and take our knees out wide. And let your seat drop down toward your feet, your head drop down toward your stacked hands or fists, resting in a modified child's pose. I have knee issues, so I don't bring my seat to my feet anymore. It turns ugly if I try. So, I thought we'd get to standing today, but I don't think we really have time because I like to get the solid five minutes for the final Shavasana. So let's just do each of those legs one more time. So let's come back up to tabletop. Extending the left leg back long, curling those toes up and maybe curl the right toes up. Lift that left leg up so it's parallel to the floor. Shift your weight into that left hand, activate those left fingertips and spider walk your right hand away. Lengthening through your left leg and your right arm. Lift your chest away from the mat. Lower the right hand back down, the left foot down, the left knee. Rock your hips and shoulders a little bit side to side. And then the right legs turn. So extend the right leg back long, curling those toes under, maybe curl the left toes under as well. Lift the right leg up so it's parallel to the floor. Shift your weight into that right arm, hand, fingers, spider walk the left arm away. So right leg is long, left arm is long. Lift your chest away from the mat, breathe. Lower that left hand down, bring the right foot down, bend the right knee. And let's swing around to a seated position. Let's go ahead and rotate the wrist. Wiggle, squiggle the fingers. Take the palm of one hand and place it on the back of the other hand. And just, excuse me, ever so gently push that palm toward the wrist. Be very gentle here. And then let's switch hands. So the palm of the hand touches the back of the opposite hand. We're just very gently pushing that palm toward its own wrist. And shake it all out. I like to encourage a three breath down movement. So let's go ahead. Sitting up nice and tall, knees bent, feet on the floor, arms extended out long in front. Take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, come back to what feels like a third of the way and inhale back down. Exhale back to what feels like two thirds of the way and inhale back up. 
This last time we go down, we're going to roll that wet lasagna noodle of the spine down onto the mat. So we're taking more than one breath, slowly lowering ourselves down. Once the upper body, head and arms make it to the floor, your job is to melt. So finding Shalasana. So remember the legs can be extended long. The knees can be bent, feet on the floor in restorative rest. Whatever position feels appropriate for you. Inhaling and exhaling. Allow your exhalations to be long, slow, and complete. Allow your inhalations to be long, slow, and complete. And for the next few minutes, allow the rhythm of your breath to guide you into peace and calm. beginning to bring some movement back to the fingers and toes, rocking your head a little bit either side of center. Pausing the movements. If your knees are not bent, bend your knees one at a time, bring your feet to the floor. And then one at a time, drawing each knee in toward your chest, rolling over onto your side and resting for several breaths before you come to a comfortable seated position. Keep your eyes closed while I adjust the legs.
beginning to come toward a seated position. Sitting tall once you're up, lifting the sternum, dropping the chin, releasing the shoulders away from the ears. Yoga is a unique and specific form of self-care. May it serve you well. Inhaling the palms up toward the ceiling, exhaling the hands together into the heart center, as we said. Namaste. Thank you all so much for coming today. I'm gonna to turn the lights up a little bit.